We're here with Marcio Feitosa, head instructor of Gracie Barra. Marcio, you guys have a lot of good competitors in this tournament. Tell us about the preparation. The team was training hard. Uh, this year we had lots of people coming in from Brazil, from other places in the United States. And we are looking forward to the result at the end. Uh, we really believe that Gracie Barra will take the first place. We did not like the fact that we lost the Pan Ams. And so we came back even stronger this time. Yeah, you guys are missing some really good competitors like uh, Homo Bahau. What happened to him? Yeah, true. Homo had a surgery on his shoulder. And the amazing thing about him is he made the effort of coming over here just to, to train with the guys that were going to compete. Even though he was just using one hand, uh, he was so helpful. And just having him there showing uh, the support to all the guys, it was very important. And he's here, so excited and already looking forward to the next year. It's amazing. His shoulder is bad, but he still goes to the gym every day. He still trains with one arm holding on the belt. And he's just an awesome guy. And even with one arm, <laughs> probably nobody passes his guard. Man, with one arm, you know what? Uh, nobody was uh, sweeping him. That was pretty amazing to me. He was being able to, to because he's known for his guard, but now since he cannot use his hand, uh, I believe he's been practicing a lot from the top and he was just doing awesome in, in passing people's guard with one arm only. It was pretty amazing to me. Yeah, speaking of not being swept, you're famous for not being swept. Your nickname is The Coin because you're, you're flat on the ground, never being swept. So how do you develop that? True. Man, it's funny. I believe the reason why I started developing that was because uh, you know how Master Carlos a lot of times he's very sincere and he tells you something from the top of his head that you're not expecting. And then one day I was training and I was playing guard. I was on my teenagers and he said something that was like, uh, hey listen, you are already a lightweight. No one will ever respect a lightweight that does not know how to apply takedowns or fight from the top because uh, the bigger guys, they'll just be on top of you until they wear you out and eventually they will catch you. Because back then the fighters were not, uh, they did not, not have the whole game. Just few people like uh, Mestre Hoyler and a couple other guys, they were able to apply takedowns, play guard and play the top. But usually one of us, we had our strengths, right? Mm. And then you could uh, capitalize on your opponent's weaknesses, like one guy was good from the top, you tried to surprise him with a takedown, you knew the other guy was good with the guard, you pulled him first. So that day when he told me that, I was like, you know what, he's right. So I started trying so hard to fight from the top, started inside the school, I was not pulling guard so often, or when I pulled, I tried to be very aggressive and get the top position and stay there, stay there, stay there. And uh, next thing I knew, uh, it became my, my strongest area on my game. It's not very common for a lightweight uh, to like to go for takedowns or to fight from the top, but then that, that's how it happened and that's how it was for me. And now how you're not competing anymore, but you're in charge of the team, so it's better for you because sometimes too much energy to compete and to train the team. So how is that this year? Yeah, it is hard to do two things and, and do those things well. So when I, I was competing and taking it very seriously, I used to train hard, do my, my diet, my physical training. And when I decided to work hard outside the mats for Gracie Barra, uh, that's now my, my new world championship. So I want to do everything I can to help the organization uh, do well, to structure it together with all the guys. And I'm just taking some time off the competitions. Not that I will not compete anymore, I still love it, but for now my heart is on coaching the guys, organizing the team, uh, helping the instructors with their, their schools and, and all that stuff. But uh, yeah, I have plans to, to be competing, maybe not uh, through the whole calendar, but one competition here, one competition there. I'll be always around, ADCC. I'll be always involved. ADCC, the Federation, everything. And uh, now let's talk Roger Gracie. He fought MMA just like two, three weeks ago. 
how is it going to compete with a gi like three weeks later? Yeah, I saw uh, him training and did not see that uh, his performance got any worse because he was training without the gear, preparing for MMA. He was just doing awesome and it seems to me that he's stronger. I think he did put some weight on for his MMA fight. That's the reason why he's fighting at the is that just uh, super super heavy. super super heavy weight. Usually he just fights on the super heavy, right? Yeah, yeah. And uh, he was just doing as always, catching people easily. So so maybe a repeat performance. I, I believe so. I think he will win his division and the open. Yeah. And this, I think. This building is good for him every time he, he competes here in the CC the last year and this year. Yeah, and I, I think because his game is so basic, it's uh, not too hard for him to adapt to the MMA and go back to the Gi and still perform awesome. Well, thank you so much, Marcinho. Good luck with the tournament. Thank you.